Uh, thank you, Professor uh, Shalom. Uh, twice, uh, once for standing uh, exactly the 25 minutes which you were allotted uh, before the mic, and secondly, for starting uh, on a, what I would call it, a bit controversial uh, uh, mode. Uh, but uh, you know, you remember that the key, one of the key words for 73 uh, war was surprise. So here is the first surprise. We are slightly deviating from the program you have in your hands. And we will ask uh, Professor Dan Shiftan from the Haifa University for a few minutes uh, to uh, expose his uh, view of the events preceding 1973. Um, and uh, I will not uh, elaborate on the exchanges that went between me, him, Professor Kipnis, who is going to speak uh, after. Uh, we leave it at that. And then you have less than 10 minutes. <clears throat> Well, uh, actually, I wanted to respond to um, Dr. Kipnis's presentation here, but since I read the book and I assume that what he's about to say is related to the book, and he will reflect what he said in the book, let me say why I have very serious issues with it. Uh, if you look at the basic message that um, is presented in the book, and I'm oversimplifying, of course, because I have 10 minutes, is that Egypt proposed in 1973 peace with Israel. Israel rejected it because of its territorial appetite concerning the Sinai. Kissinger delayed and stalemated the Egyptian attempt. And then Nas and, uh, Sadat decided to go to war. And this is how 2,650 2, Israelis were dead in a way that could have been avoided because, and this for me is a very crucial element, in the final analysis what Israel got in 1977 and Begin signed is very similar to what Israel could have had be before 1973. And this is, in my view, is uh, not the way things were at the time. And let me suggest what I believe happened there based, among other things, on all the documents that Dr. Kipnis pre presented us with, and I think made an important contribution to the research on the subject by um, uh, exposing these documents. First of all, what Egypt offered in 1973 was an imposed solution where the United States, and I'm using Hafez Ismail's words, words, will deliver Israel. In other words, an American-Egyptian agreement, not negotiated between Israel and Egypt, but between Israel and the United States, that was linked with an ultimatum on the part of the Egyptians that unless the negotiations and the American commitment to push Israel out of the Sinai Peninsula or to get an Israeli commitment to leave the entire Sinai Peninsula is concluded by September 1973, Egypt will go to war. And that's a very crucial element, the time element, because what Kissinger suggested to Hafez Ismail, um, uh, Sadat's, uh, representative, his advisor on national security, was that immediately after the elections in Israel that were to be held in October 1973, only one month after the ultimatum of Sadat, he is willing to undergo in a very ma major way a process that will force Israel to go in this direction of, of giving up the uh, sovereignty in the Sinai Peninsula. And this will be concluded within 1974 and 1975. In other words, in a process that was more or less the same length of time, would take more or less the same length of time than what we had between 1977 and 1979. And one very important point is that Israel understood and accepted that when the United States negotiates, I'm speaking about the commitment by Golda Meir on the 28th of February 1973, delivered through Rabin to, um, to Kissinger, is that Israel understands that the negotiations between the United States and Egypt 
will be focused on the question of what Kissinger called sovereignty for security, namely an understanding that the Sinai Peninsula will go to, back to Egyptian sovereignty, but Israel will have security arrangements, including Kissinger believed and hoped a presence of Israeli soldiers in Sinai, so that on the one hand, Israel can leave the Sinai Peninsula uh, in terms of sovereignty to the Egyptians and only maintain security. The most important disagreement I have with this uh, presentation is that not only is it not similar to what Israel got in 1977, it is almost the extreme opposite of what Israel got in 1977, and we have four important points. First of all, in 1973, Israel was presented with basically a non-belligerency uh, concept. Namely, Egypt will commit itself not to go to war, but not to make peace, and the Egyptians made very clear the distinction of it, not only when they spoke to Kissinger, but even Sadat in his public statements in 1974 and 1975 and 1976, even after the war, that only the next generations will see peace, because what we need to have, the Egyptians said, Sadat said, is to settle the issue with the Palestinians, and particularly the uh, refugee issue. The second place where there is a major, major difference is that what Israel got in 1977 was a separate agreement standing on its own feet. Yes, there was the Palestinian issue and the Palestinian negotiations, but Egypt committed itself that whatever happens with the Palestinians, the peace between Israel and Egypt will stand. Third, there was in the final analysis in the Sinai Peninsula this distinction between sovereignty and security because Israel got a very major portion of uh, disengagement, in, I'm sorry, of um, disarmament of Sinai. In other words, Sinai was demilitarized in a very major way. And Israel could keep its security in spite of the fact that it recognized the entire Egyptian um, sovereignty over the Sinai Peninsula. And one thing that is al always underestimated in insignificance, namely it was reached in direct negotiations between Israel and Egypt, and not negotiations of the United States and Egypt at the expense of Israel or without at least the presence of, um, uh, uh, the presence of Israel. This is crucial from an Israeli point of view. And in 1977, if you remember, Sadat went to see Begin because he realized that Carter is trying to bypass the bilateral approach by negotiating with the Soviets and trying to reach an American-Soviet agreement where the Russians will come in and the Palestinians will come in, and what he insisted on is direct negotiations. This is one of the major reasons he came to Jerusalem. To conclude, in one sentence, I would say the following. When Sadat wanted war, he suggested a settlement that is unrealistic, tied with an ultimatum in time and an imposed uh, solution. And when he wanted peace, he offered direct negotiations, legitimacy to Israel even before the beginning of the negotiations when he came to Jerusalem, a separate agreement, and an abandonment of the claims beyond the question that Israel and Egypt had directly. Thank you.